Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer, and this is a continuation of my story, the heritage of my earlier times. There's been a lot of interest and a lot of requests for me to keep going, so I will. Um, now, in the last episode, I told you about the times that I used to go on the drama course at Lodge Hill in Pulborough and where I did a bit of hypnosis on one of the chaps and a couple of people I said oh, I'd like to know more about the hypnosis. Well I'll cover that in a, in a different um, episode if that's okay. This one I want to continue what I was doing on the drama side of things. So I was in Petworth attending these uh, courses uh, for about two years and whilst I was there we, we had a teacher who was a mime teacher called Yuri Stanislav. He was a Czechoslovakian mime teacher. And he was a strange bloke because there were a number of us who were very interested in mime, in the universal language of mime, of being able to do all those incredible things that you saw people like Marcel Marceau do, the wall and walking in the wind and pulling, um, uh, walking a dog and, and all those sort of things. And yet uh, Yuri, wasn't very interested in teaching technique. It was more philosophy. It was more expressive mime, which I have to say uh, didn't go down terribly well with many of us who wanted to, on a course, to come away with something solid that we could show people, you know, do a little bit of the wall and stuff like that. Um, but he wasn't really into any of that. But I kept going on the course and uh, learning what I could from him. And then later on, one weekend, on one of these drama courses, he couldn't make it. And the drama advisor, the chap running the course, uh, George Rawlings, said, uh, Richard, you've been doing all of Yuri's workshops, you'll have to run the course. And I said, uh, what? what? <laughs> so I was put a bit on the spot. And so I found myself with a bunch of um, students and also uh, amateur drama people of all ages on a course and a drama course and part of that course was a, a mime slots and I had to run something like three three or four workshops an hour long each on something that uh, I was not really qualified to do but regurgitate what I had learned and when people were asking me how you do things like the wall or pulling um, a rope or these sort of gimmicks if you like but they are part of the technique um, I had to sort of try and learn that on the spot and I've discovered very often that you learn most you learn very quickly when you need to teach something and so I had to think about things. So people would ask me, Richard, how do you do such and such? And Yuri hadn't shown us. And so I just had to sort of think it through mechanically in my mind and go, well, this is what you do and pretend that I knew what I was talking about. Uh, later on, uh, years later, uh, not many years later, I went to mime school and actually learned that actually quite a lot of what I was saying was solid information, some of it was not so solid, but um, it was a huge learning experience to go from pupil to teacher because it made me think in a way that I hadn't had to think before about communicating something that I most wanted to know, if any of that makes any sense whatsoever. Anyway, so that was one of the things we were doing at um, Lodge Hill. I left Petworth to go back to Horsham and I went back to my home address in, uh, in Horsham with my mum, who was still an alcoholic, but only temporarily. We had got over our um, difficult um, time, our difference of opinion, and my mother let me stay again. And whilst I was there, I helped a friend who I had worked with at the printing firm that I had gone to work with when I left school at 15, she was a, an art artist and a typesetter um, there, but she had left because she wanted to set up her own business. She wasn't happy there. She wanted to set up her own business and she wanted somebody to help her get it off the ground by doing the printing. So she had approached me because I used to work there and she said, would I help her? And I said, yeah, no, of course. And she would pay me. 
not much, but she, you know, it was the, she was setting up a business and I was more than happy to do because at that point I was sort of out of work anyway. So we went and had a look at printing machines and we found this Multilith printer. I can't remember, I think it was something like a Multi Multilith 1280, but I may be thinking um, of the wrong number. It might have been 1850, I don't know. But anyway, it was a printing press. We had a look at it. I um, looked at it, made sure it was all right. Then we brought it back and we installed it in the premises that she had. And I worked there for three months, getting this thing working and actually taking on orders and, and helping her set the business up. It may have been longer. And then, but I said, I don't want to do this forever because that's one of the reasons I'd left the previous business because I wasn't, um, I didn't want to be a printer. And so she said, that's fine. So she found a replacement who I trained up. I don't really remember much about that time, really. Um, I do remember that it was great fun going into this, this old premises, which was a bit knackered and um, painting. We painted it up. We made it, tarted it up, made it look nice. Got the printer in there, as I say. And it was a bit like old times. I was there also seeing some of the customers and, and I felt important and involved and responsible. But I knew ultimately it wasn't what I wanted to do. And I did leave in the end once she'd got this other chap to um, take over, which was fine. Now, around that time, I'm in my 20s at this point. I lived in Petworth between 18 and 20. And I came back when I was in my early 20s, 20, 21. And it was around that time that I'd been also with a bunch of the youth theatre people that I'd been working with. And I was working with four, sorry, three other chaps and myself. And we set up a theatre company called the Toadstool Theatre Company. Don't ask me why we called it Toadstool. We just loved the name. Toadstool Theatre Company sounded great. It had a lovely logo of a the toadstool with all the spots on it and all of that. It was fantastic. We got a friend of ours to draw up the toadstool and and I because I made all the printing and I got all the printing done at the printing place where I was working free of charge. So that was really handy. And we sent out we we put together um, a, a show called the Beanbag Saga. It was a bit of a sort of a physical physical theatre show for about 15 minutes and then a number of sketches and bits of mime and, and various other things. And we put this out, I put together a, a brochure and sent it out to all the festivals. And we got a festival interested in us appearing. The only thing was this festival was in Stirling in Scotland and we were down in Sussex. And, but we were very excited because we thought, well, we get one of these, we could tour around, do many of these festivals. And I'd sent these um, brochures out to all sorts of people, pictures of us in, you know, stupid poses as you do when you're young and in your 20s and being very artistic. And, um, but only one, <laughs> we only got this one festival. And as the day, and it was some, sometime in early August, I imagine, or end of July type time, um, so the idea of what we were going to do was to go up and camp and then perform at this festival for three days and then come home. Well, as we got closer and closer to this festival, about a week before, the three other guys bottled out. They said they didn't want to do it. And I said, well, what do you mean? You can't, you can't bottle out. We've, we're booked to do this. We can't cancel. They're expecting us. And we're in the programme. Toadstool Theatre Company. You can't just cancel. But they did. And I was left because I'd done all the, the admin and negotiation with the chap. So I had to ring him up and say, look, I'm really sorry, but three of the guys don't want to do it. I said, but if you'll accept me, I'll come and do it. So very quickly in the space of three, three odd days, whatever it was I had left, I went through the routine and did all the parts myself. Um, and so this beanbag saga, we had originally four giant beanbags and we had performed it as street theatre in a number of um, places, including Petersfield, I remember. And we all start on our backs and it's a sort of physical theatre thing where these creatures come to life and they start doing things, a bit caveman-like. And they, um, it, it's, I suppose in a way, it was a sort of ages of man type thing. 
and we all start interacting with each other. Of course, when the other three weren't there on these giant coloured bean bags, it made it a bit awkward. But I had this one bean bag, giant foam filled bean bag, um, and a, I had some juggling skills at that point, uh, circus skills, a bit of knife juggling, and I think I was doing fire eating and all those sort of things at this time. So I combined this into more of a street theatre performance instead of a, a more theatre, if you like. It was more circus skills theatre. And I got on a coach and I went up on the coach to Scotland one Sunday morning, got there around about six o'clock. And all I knew when I got there is on the Monday was the festival. That night I was going to camp at the campsite, which I had written down and perform. And then I would meet the chap and he would, and I had arrangements where to meet him in the town. And um, I would perform and he would take me around to all the different places. So it was all sort of pretty well planned. So when I got to the, the uh, bus station up there in Stirling, got off the bus and thought, where the hell is the campsite? I had absolutely no idea. So I went up to a guy who was in a, a, a burger van and I said, excuse me, can you tell me where the so-and-so campsite was? Now we're talking in the 19, where are we? We're probably talking about 82, 83, something like that. Um, and he was in his, in his burger van and I turned up and I said, can you tell me? And he said, it's that, that, and just out there. And anyway, he gave me the directions, but all in this incredibly broad Scottish accent. I had no idea what he said. So I looked at him and I went, oh, thank you very much and walked on somewhat stunned and I carried on walking thinking oh my god I'm in Scotland I have no idea where I'm camping for the night because it was in August it was still light of course fortunately um, and I just thought what am I going to do I've got to get through the night and then I know where I'm meeting the guy the following day and maybe he can help me find the campsite then I saw this bloke on his motorbike um, by a bridge and he was fiddling with something on the, on the motorbike or posting a letter or something like that. I can't really remember, but anyway, it's by his bike. So I went up to him and I said, excuse me, can you tell me um, wh how to get to this campsite, which I had written down? And he said, oh, yeah, that's about five miles away and it's up in the hills. I said, oh God, is it? He said, yeah, no, it's, it's not a local campsite. And he said, well, why, what are you doing? So I told him I was at the festival and I was appearing tomorrow and all of this. And he said, oh God. He said, well, what are you going to do? I said, well, to be honest with you, I don't know. He said, look, why don't you? He said, I know this might sound a bit mad. He said, oh, by the way, I should have said, of course, I noticed immediately he spoke in English. He was from Brighton. He was in, he said, oh, I'm, yeah, no, I'm originally from Brighton, originally from Sussex. I live now up in Stirling, up uh, in, over the bridge and in one of the rows of terrace houses up there. And he said, look, I know this might sound a bit odd, but why don't you come and stay the night with myself and my girlfriend? We'll put you up for the night. We very much support the festival. Um, and then you can get yourself sorted out from there. And well, that's what happened. And he was very much my savior. So I went back and, and then his, they were both nurses, funnily enough. And she came back from her shift and he said, oh, hello, darling, this is Richard. He's, he's gonna be staying the night tonight. Is that OK? And she said, yeah. And they were very, very, I mean, it was just such a fluke, really. They were very into what I was doing and they were very impressed. And um, in, a, in the event, I stayed there for the whole festival. Um, and they were really, really kind because it was n the campsite was just too far away. So that was great. And I went to see the chap the next day and um, he took me round. And we ha I, had a, I had a ball, really. It was really great fun. And the show worked as a one man band, um, which was really, really interesting because later on I've been doing street theatre as a one man band. And it was very much that sort of, you know, I'd burnt my bridges, I'd got there, I had to do it. I learnt on the job, as it were, and it was a skill that I could then roll out whenever I wanted. And it was a fantastic experience. Did the three days. I had to charge them less because there was only me, but I still made more money out of it. 
And I was to be, I came back um, holding my head proud and we did it for another two years. So for three years running and each year the show got slightly different, more better um, to the point that um, I took a friend one time and put on a performance in theatres with a sound engineer. So that was, that was just an amazing experience. Um, so it is amazing what you can do when you are backed into a corner and you've really got to pull up, you know, come out with the goods. It's just absolutely um, sensational. So, yeah, that's um, part of that early drama part of my life, learning skills that had would come into their own later on. So I hope you found that interesting. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to follow, like and subscribe, of course. Give me a thumbs up if any of that's been fun. I'd be interested in the times if you've been put into a corner and have had to pull a metaphorical rabbit out of a hat. That would be interesting to hear. So do leave your comments below. Till next time, thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>